Hi guys, so it is Nature and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be talking about 10 things I wish that I knew before I started playing Animal Crossing. These are obviously just my opinion. Um, if anyone's starting out and want to know, you know, what I would want to know. Does that make sense? I've gotten a lot of comments on my channel being like, Oh, I just started playing and your videos like helped me out a lot. So I thought that this could answer a few of your questions. Okay, so let's just get right into it because I don't like a long intro and you probably don't either. Okay, so your airport color affects um, the items that you get in your Nook stop. You know the things that you can buy online at the ATM? I'll put up like a guide on the screen right now. Obviously, this won't be such a huge issue if you have Nintendo online and you can like travel and trade with other people and obviously like you know get the colors that you want but if you don't have Nintendo online this is probably a really good thing to keep in mind so knowing like what colors fit your theme or whatever or if you don't have a theme just what colors you like second one is that your starter villagers do not matter and you are forced to get your first campsite and you know that villager also doesn't matter i used to be very picky with the villagers that i first get when i like start my island and stuff Ooh not bad not bad villagers but now i'm not that picky anymore because i know that they don't really matter and they'll eventually be kicked off my island anyways <laughs> also the other thing that i was talking about is your first campsite villager you have to take in i remember my first campsite villager was a very um questionable one and i really did not want him on my island i'll put a picture of him on the screen and i waited days i time traveled months thinking that he was gonna be off my campsite but he wasn't and i eventually had to take him in anyways so just take him in and then kick him out later so third is look at the riverbanks and the rocks that surround the beach and your resident services how far away it is from the airport those things cannot be changed i think the first time i had an island my resident services was way too close to my airport and it was just a weird design so this time i decided to choose one that was extra far away but also it depends on like your preference and what your island is but yeah look at where the rivers are coming in from those things are unchangeable look at the rocks that surround the, the sand those that's also not changeable Fourth is you cannot change your name, birthday, or island name, so choose wisely. I know my cousin, he named his um, island like a visco girl. I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's because I'm not a visco girl. Never was, never will be, but he named it that because like visco girls and stuff. Anyways, probably a mistake. Do you regret naming your island? No. <laughs> Name it something that you would enjoy for like multiple years, you know what I mean? And your birthday as well, you can't change your birthday. I don't know why anyone would. Um, you get like stuff on your birthday, so you might want to like put your real birthday so it's like special or whatever. Five is the native fruit, doesn't really matter, you'll get other fruits anyways. Um, and same thing goes for flowers. I've gotten apples like three times in a row. It can get boring and repetitive, but um, doesn't really matter because in the end you'll get to travel even if you don't have Nintendo online you'll get to travel and then you will be getting fruits anyways so it doesn't really matter and same thing goes for flowers I have gone to like mom's last time and I mom's are like my least favorite flowers but I like I got other flowers either way so it really again doesn't matter <laughs> six is put your houses on the beach okay i cannot stress this enough the first time i had to spend days and so much so many bells like just moving my houses from the island to the beach and then moving it back just trust me and put the houses on the beach because in the end you'll move them anyway unless you have like a very like laid out plan of how you want to design your island i definitely recommend putting it on the beach and then moving them in later when you've built the exterior stuff this is like the one that i'm probably gonna stress the most because i feel like it's the most important you do not want to waste like millions of bells just moving your houses back and forth especially with the loans and stuff like that like tom don't be making cash from that you know seven is stunting a tree so i found this so useful especially for like if you're doing cottage core i've never done cottage core but i found this really useful to add some like level and like depth into my island so this is how you stunt a tree first of all you want to put the tree that you want to stunt so this is like a medium tree i like medium trees or like the like almost medium ones and then you want to dig a hole and then put a, like a sapling behind it and that will stunt the tree so there we go eight is run into resident services when you're being chased by bees i feel like that happens to me like every day i get chased by bees like all the time um so so whenever you're shaking trees and you're being chased by bees literally just run as fast as you can unless you want to catch them of course but like who wants to catch them just quickly run into resident services and they will go away so 
Nine is planting bells. So when I first started playing the game, I was so confused of what it was. And I had to search up like 10,000 tutorials and stuff like that, which is so stupid because it's so simple. Whenever you see something gold on the floor, it appears like once, like, I don't know, like every day. I'm not sure. But whenever you see something gold on the floor, it's money. So dig it up and then it'll be like a golden like hole and it'll like shine and stuff. You're going to put money back in and then like it'll become a tree. And that's basically where money trees are. Okay, for me personally, whenever I put in more bells, I get more bells back it's like almost like an investment uh basically money trees just grow the money because it'll be worth it <laughs> um next is foreign fruits cost more when you go to islands and you get fruits that are not the ones that are usually grown on your island for example if i got peaches and my native fruit was apples the peaches would sell for a higher amount of money than the apples and that's a great way to make bells anyways guys that will be it for this video those are all the tips and tricks that i have for you guys and i hope you guys learned something new if you're starting out i don't know if this helps at all but um thank you so much for being here with me today and for listening to me ramble and ramble and ramble um i'm so sorry i've been gone for a while i realize that i've just had so many things to do and no time at all if you are new here and you're starting your animal crossing journey um i do make animal crossing content so if you want to like subscribe or something that would be cool <laughs> and like this video if it helped you out in any way and comment down below whatever you want to comment down below because it helps with the engagement so um thank you so much for watching this video i love you guys so much and i'll see you guys in my next one bye <laughs>